So I'm the kind of person where I like to go against the grain. I don't like to just hear what well, the say what mainstream media about. is saying about it, 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 nutrition it, 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 or fitness or anything. I like to learn, you know, the truth. And in this case, I decided to learn about cancer. What I learned, I think the main takeaway from that book, I highly recommend you read it. It's a good The main takeaway from the book is that caffeine doesn't give us energy. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm low on energy, I feel tired, I need some coffee, or I need some, some pop or something. But the truth is, caffeine doesn't give you energy, it gives you stress. So what do I mean about the dangers of caffeine, right? Well, a lot of the studies out there that make caffeine sound pretty innocent, but in reality, caffeine is a drug, or it's a poison that's produced by plants to keep insects and small animals with humans. But we humans, we learned that larger than insects and small animals we can tolerate a certain amount of caffeine and it has an effect on us and that effect is that it triggers our adrenal glands two glands sitting on top of our kidneys and our lower back to produce a couple hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine okay, these are stress hormones so basically caffeine doesn't give you energy like people think they say oh i'm low on energy i need some caffeine i need some coffee need some coffee. no that's not how it works Caffeine actually gives you stress. It produces stress hormones. And those stress hormones produced by your adrenal glands are the same hormones that would be produced if, say, a tiger jumped out of the coat closet or you almost got hit by a bus, right? So although it's good to feel alert and awake in the morning and it's nice to enjoy a cup of coffee, I started to question, like, do I really want to be doing that to my body? Do I really want to be taxing my adrenals day after day? So after reading that book and realizing that caffeine doesn't give me energy, it gives me stress, actually, and learning a lot of other really, like, eye-opening things about caffeine, I decided to try going one month without any caffeine whatsoever. And here's the method I use to wean off of caffeine in case you guys want to try it too. It's a really effective method, and if you use this method exactly as I described, you won't feel any withdrawal symptoms. I didn't have any headaches, I didn't have any trouble sleeping or anything like that, so check this out. I was a coffee drinker and not really a coffee and it's basically a glass cylinder with a filter attached to the lid so you're going to go ahead and pull that lid off and add one two three four and five teaspoons of coffee grounds and then pour in hot water for your kettle fill it up with the recommended amount for your french press and then once it's full you're going to give it a good stir with a spoon let it sit for a few minutes. After you've given it some time for all the flavors to melt, you just want to go ahead and push that filter down through the coffee to push all the grounds to the bottom. And that's how you're going to make your coffee when you're weaning off of caffeine. And in order to wean off, you can recommend you get something like this. This is Chino brand herbal coffee. Alright, so being herbal, it's completely caffeine free, meaning it's not decaf, it is naturally caffeine free. Barley. It's actually quite simple. This is the Java flavor, but they also make the French roast. That's really good. You buy this, and you can start to get it in with your regular coffee in the French press. So this table illustrates how in just 11 days, you can completely wean off of caffeine. Remember in the example I showed you, I put 5 teaspoons of regular coffee grounds into the French press. And there were 0 teaspoons of herbal coffee. That's day one of the table. Now, if you look at day two, you reduce regular coffee by half a teaspoon, four and a half teaspoons total, but then you're substituting that half a teaspoon of coffee. And each day, you half a teaspoon of regular and add half a teaspoon of herbal until you get all the way down to day 11, where you're now completely on herbal coffee with zero regular Trust me, guys, this works withdrawal symptoms, and if you do experience any withdrawal symptoms, just pause on whatever day you're at. So, for example, if you're on day six, where you're at half and half, right, 2.5 meters, regular and verbal, and you notice a headache or something, just pause there at the half and half until the headaches start going away, and then keep on going to day seven, day eight, etc., once your withdrawal symptoms are done. 
Okay, so how about the pros and cons to being a hobby in that game? Alright, because I know a lot of people are probably watching this and thinking like, I don't know how you do this. Like, why would you want to quit caffeine? Let me just explain that there are upsides and downsides to it. Alright, first, the downsides. The first thing to know is that caffeine is a further than it paid. And that's just a fancy term for a drug that helps you with exercise. Helps you feel more alert, your heart rate is up, and it kind of numbs the discomfort of the exercise. So the first downside of doing off caffeine is that my workouts aren't quite as good. Alright, I, I still get in good workouts, trust me, but it's just not the same without caffeine. The second downside to being off of caffeine is the social factor. Okay, when you're avoiding caffeine entirely, and then your friends want to go out for coffee, or they're serving coffee at brunch, or dessert, or birthday party, you're tempted by it, everybody else is partaking, but you're declining. So, it's just that social factor. I mean, it's not a big deal, but you kind of miss it at this time. And for a third downside to the caffeine free, I really do feel like that my brain still isn't operating as fast as when I was caffeinated. Okay, I don't know if it'll ever be the same, if it just needs more time or what. That is definitely uh, something I've noticed, and maybe, I don't know, maybe one day it'll be the same, but as of right now, I still don't feel 100% as sharp as when I was capping. Okay, now for all the up- Fuck, fuck. Yeah, and yeah. that